Good evening. Uh, welcome tonight. Uh, my name's uh, Charlie Ebright, uh, head baseball coach here at Bishop Carroll. I uh, got my coaching staff here with. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, some of you have been through this uh, a couple times, maybe three times. Uh, thank you uh, for coming for a fourth uh, for the senior parents. And uh, we're going to get started. Uh, I do want to point this out at the bottom. Uh, this is how I communicate. Uh, at, at Bishop Carroll Catholic High School, we have rules as far as how we communicate with students. So instead of attaching everything to a parent and the student, uh, I just make it public. Uh, so I know some of you might be anti-Twitter. I understand it's a, a controversial uh, thing. But uh, if, you know, if you just get on and follow this only, that's all you got to worry about, okay? Um, and notifications are good as well. So, like, if uh, I post something, you get a notification on your phone saying I've posted something. This is great for practice, especially so tryouts starting Monday. Uh, it's supposed to rain Sunday. So we're going to figure out what we're going to do on Monday, whether we're going to do pitching and catching, fielding or throwing, or whether we have to move inside. So uh, I will check field conditions during the day, and I will post uh, during the day. Uh, this is especially good for uh, players that don't drive, parents for kids that don't drive. Uh, so uh, I, I try and stay up on this you know, as much as possible, game changes, anything like that. So this is definitely how I communicate, OK? Um, so let me introduce uh, my coaching staff. Uh, I'm recording this video, as you might have heard. Uh, we have basketball games tonight. Quite a few kids <laughs> playing basketball that are going out for baseball as well. So um, it, it was a scheduling issue with getting this room for the player meeting. And I like to do the player meeting and the parent me meeting on the same day. So, uh, so this is my 23rd year here at Bishop Carroll, my 25th year coaching here, uh, two years in, as an assistant and uh, 23 years as a head coach, 25 years teaching here. Um, and I feel very blessed uh, when I look back at it. It's, it's been a great run um, that I've had here, both in the classroom and on the baseball field. And uh, I, I take that responsibility very seriously um, as a head coach uh, and as a teacher um, on the field and in the classroom. And so um, let me introduce some of my coaches. This is Paul Sanigorski right here. Just wave hi, Paul. Uh, Paul is a uh, Kansas Baseball Hall of Famer. Uh, he started the baseball program at Newman U University. What year was that, Paul? 78. What year? 78. Okay, in 1978. Okay. Uh, ran that program for many years and then uh, decided to move into pro baseball. Uh, he spent 10 years with the Marlins and the Nationals organizations uh, as a coach and a hitting guy. And uh, when his son got to high school from St. Francis, uh, he decided to hang up his day job and come coach high school baseball. And uh, we've been blessed to have him here for 11 years. Uh, our next coach is Coach Brent Holman. Uh, comes from a great line of baseball lineage uh, from North High. Uh, and... Uh, He's been coaching here for 16 years and uh, it's been a blessing to our program. His boys have come through here and uh, and I expect him to stay on like Paul has when his boys leave. Okay, so, you got that right, Brent? Yeah. And uh, our JV coach and C team coach, uh, we got uh, Ray Beatty. Okay, Ray, wave. Okay, and Tony, wave. Okay, so he's our youngest member. I'm our second youngest member. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and and Coach Holbrook, right? Okay. And Coach uh, Holbrook, his son played in our program, and uh, he was one of the dads that kind of got along with pretty good. And uh, I, he coached in the summer, and I'm like, you need to keep coaching. And uh, brought him back out of retirement, and uh, he's always a great ear to have. Uh, uh, he gets a good feel for the team and the players, and uh, he, he's always got ideas brewing in his head, and uh, a good go-to guy. So um, 
I feel very honored to have these gentlemen with me. Uh, they have the best interest of your sons uh, every day when they go out to the ball field. Um, they're very good human beings, um, and um, I'm, I'm very blessed to have you guys. So um, let me just kind of go through a few things uh, that I need to kind of cover with you all. Uh, uh, Jenny Dooling, who is our athletic secretary, she was uh, shocked by how many, like, all of the kids have physicals in and concussions in. We had one senior that doesn't play any of the sports, got his in today, so we don't have any worries about concussion forms or physical forms uh, to worry about next week as we get into tryouts. Uh, so good job on all of you uh, on that. Okay, uh, I talked to the boys this afternoon, as I said, um, at 3.30. Actually, we started a little early because we had the senior faculty game, and that got done early. And um, I talked to the boys about communication with injuries, and we do have some guys coming in to the season with some, some nicks and bruises and sprains and that sort of thing. Uh, I really do ask if the kids communicate with our staff about these these things that can fester. Um, we can watch guys play catch and tell, you know, like something doesn't look right, but it's really up to them to understand the difference between pain and soreness. When there is pain, we need to ice, we need to rest, we need to, we need to heal. When there's soreness, we need to work through that. We need to run, we need blood flow. We need to go. Um, and I told the kids they need to start to learn and understand that. Whether it's a quad, a running sprints, a hammy, elbow, it's biting. Okay, let's take a couple days off. I tell the kids, listen, don't, you're not going to lose your spot. Nothing's going to be bad. Let's take a couple days off. Let's, let's rest. Let's ice. But I, I can't always see that. They've got to communicate that. There's nothing wrong with when we're running bases at the end of practice. You stay here and you do crunches because we need to rest your hip or your hamstring. Okay, It's not going to cause any problems for them. But if they don't communicate, okay, and if they're going home and you're seeing something, you need to, if you can tell your son, hey, tell coach. Okay, yeah, just, just let them know something's not right, okay? And we've got a good trainer here. Um, we can get them in at the beginning of practice, get some whatever work they need done. Um, and uh, Jacob's really good about diagnosing certain things. So uh, just that that's really big because we don't want something to go from something that's nagging to something that's worse. Okay. Um, so that, that's kind of the general rule. Uh, when I started coaching, it was always ice. Let's, you know, you throw, you throw a game, let's throw ice on it. No. If you're healthy, let's run. Let's get ready for the next start, okay? Um, let's get the blood flow, okay? Uh, oxygen moving through the body, okay? So uh, I did encourage the boys. I know uh, registration for uh, next year has ended, but it's, I mean, you can always meet with the counselor. A lot of guys have been working hard in the off season, weight room, which I always encourage the boys at the end of the season, you know, let's come back stronger, more physical, more athletic than we were last year. And I can tell by the shapes of the young men's bodies that a lot of them have been working hard. We don't want to lose those gains as the season goes. Okay, so if they have room in their schedule for a weights class in the spring. Now, football kids are lifting in the morning year-round. And uh, I know that's that's tough on kids. Uh, God bless them. But if you're a football guy, stick with that through the season. Okay, if you're not, try and get in a weight class so you don't lose those gains during the season. You maintain those gains. Okay, because... If you go to practice, you're there till 6, 6.30, get something to eat, you go to YMCA, you know, work out. When do you have time to, like, focus on school? Okay, so uh, weight class can help supplement that, okay? Uh, there's the Twitter again, okay? And then 
for schedules, uh, if you're ever looking for the baseball schedule, you go to the athletics website, okay, Bishop Carroll website, and go to athletics, there's a calendar, okay, and then when you scroll down, you can click on varsity, baseball, JV baseball, C team baseball, okay. Now, I've been working to fill those schedules. One of the problems we have is Bishop Carroll is the only city league school with a C team. So when we play Northwest, JV, we, our JV plays Northwest, then our C team plays Northwest JV the same day. So we get one game each, their JV gets two games. So I have to schedule non-league games for JV and C team to try and fill a 20 game schedule. I'm at 19 for JV and I'm at 18 for C team. I got a couple more to fill and we're almost there. Okay. And I try and fill those with quality. Uh, we got May South, we got May's double headers for JV C team, uh, picking up life prep, which they, they run a really good program. Um, so those will be quality derby and so forth. Okay. So uh, we try and uh, schedule the best competition we can in those non-league games, which it actually works out pretty good for our JVC team. They play good competition outside of the city. Uh, varsity, we have 16 city league games, and then we get four non-league games. So we play two against Mays and two against Derby, which are two of the better programs uh, in this area. Uh, and so that usually turns out to be pretty good competition. Uh, so. If you're looking at the schedule, the C team schedule, give it a little bit of time and we'll get it all filled out. Uh, there's two tournaments. Uh, Heights holds a JV tournament on a Saturday, but we send our C team to that JV tournament. Mays holds a C team tournament as well. Some teams send JV teams to that. We'll send our C team to that. So uh, C team will have two Saturday tournaments. Okay. Which are great. They play three games in a day or all day, um, which may not be great. Hopefully, it's a nice day and uh, we get a lot of baseball. It's good stuff. Uh, so, if you have questions about the schedule, uh, talk to your boys. I, you know, we'll and, and check this schedule. Uh, it's usually pretty good. Okay. Um, as far as spirit pack stuff, uh, this is something new. Tony's wearing that. Um, most of the kids ordered hats. The ones that didn't, I, uh, I ordered extra hats. And I think I've got them all to all the kids that need hats. Um, once we have tryouts, uh, as soon as tryouts are over, I will open up the store again and people can order stuff, uh, you know, Sweatshirts, hats, whatever you want. Shorts, sweats, everything. Okay. You don't have to buy anything. Uh, one thing I do like the kids to wear is that we have a green shirt that just says, has Carol C on it and baseball to wear to practice, and they can wear it under their jerseys. There's a three quarter sleeve that's uh, white and green. Uh, that's good. I told the boys today. Uh, Coach Danagorski, when he joined me 11 years ago, he's like, here's one of my things. We need an 80 degree rule. Okay. If it's not 80 degrees, you're wearing sleeves. Okay. So I'm like, okay, 80 degrees, jeez. So I got these nice light three quarter sleeves, okay, which will make Paul happy. Okay. So they're light and they're good to wear under the uniform. Uh, so uh, protect the arm, right? To protect the elbow, okay, keep it warm. It makes sense. Okay, moving on. I put this together um, quite a few years ago, and I really don't feel like I've needed to change it. Um, read over it the other day before the, you know the, the meeting, the, the preparation for this, and I'm like, ah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, so our mission statement as a program uh, is to develop a program that will elevate and enhance student athletes' physical, mental, and spiritual education. Through hard work and discipline, students will mature and develop 
a strong work ethic, work ethic excuse me, and a culture of high expectations. Experiencing teamwork and mental toughness will help these student athletes succeed in life. I would just like to say, I understand like the sacrifices you have made as a parent to be a baseball parent. Okay, uh, my son is 22. He went through my through this program, and uh, I coached him from about eight. I tried not to coach my son, and then I was like, I need to step in and help. But uh, I understand like what you guys invest in this and the amount of time. But at the same time, it's been wonderful, hasn't it? It's been a joy. I mean, just the journey, all the families you meet. Uh, is special. Uh, and so I appreciate everything you guys have put into this. It is, it is truly a joy. And we hope to take these kids to the next level. Uh, we, get to, we get to practice six days a week, okay, which you don't do in the summer. In the summer, you might practice one day a week, a couple of days a week in preparation for the summer, and then next thing you know, you're just playing. Uh, so we do a lot of practice. And so um, we get to, you know, really, I think, affect uh, them in, in, a, in a bigger way. And, and also that we're in the Catholic school system and uh, get to teach um, more than just baseball. And the amount of failure, and this is what I talked to the boys about today, is the amount of failure in baseball is so much like life. And, uh, you know, you, if you're, you're at bat, you're on an island. If you're on the mound, you're on an island. And everybody's watching you when you give up that home run or when you strike out. And you have to pick yourself back up. And that, that is just life. And so uh, for that reason, this is the best, the best sport there is. I know your kids might play other sports, but this is the best sport. And um, it really is. I mean, there's no question. Okay. So uh, we want them to succeed. And, you know, it's crazy, like, my wife is a, is a project manager, chemical engineer out at Coke Industries, and that's what brought me to Kansas. And she's got two guys that are working for her right now that are grooming. She's grooming to be their project managers already, engineers, two of them that played for me. Three of them went to Bishop Carroll. And I'm just like, these guys, you know, what our kids go on to do is amazing. And if we can help in that formation, that's what we want. And uh, so that's that's what we're going to, I mean, we're going to work hard. We're going to push these boys. And uh, some of them uh, have an extreme amount of talent. And uh, some of them are going to elevate to a high level of baseball. Some of them are going to elevate in other things. Uh, if we can help in that journey, that's what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're going to have three teams. Like I said, we're going to have a C team, a JV, and a varsity. Uh, Based on the player meeting today, um, our numbers are back up. Um, there was a year or two where I was 80 plus players coming out for baseball. Um, I think soccer took a little bit of bite into that, um, but uh, we're coming back up. So last the last two years were the lowest numbers I've ever had come out for baseball. Um, two years ago, I think we only cut like two kids. Uh, we only had like 53, 54 kids come out. Uh, last year, I think we had 57. So we, we had to cut five or six kids. Uh, this year, there were a couple kids that didn't make it to the meeting that were freshmen that I don't know. Um, and then a couple that showed up. Uh, so if everybody that's on this list shows up, uh, it will be 63 coming out for baseball on Monday. Um, I'll check on those two kids, but 61 to 63 is going to be the number. Um, we generally keep 48 for three teams. Um, if I have a large number of pitcher only, guys that we designate that they just pitch, um, that number could go up to 50 or so. Uh, so we'll see based on the talent level of the freshman class and what they can do. Um, whether we designate some guys as pitcher only or not. Um, so we're looking at cutting somewhere between 10 to 12 guys. Um, 
I guess at a minimum eight to 12 guys. Okay, so this is something that is uh, very difficult. Uh, I'm the only one in the building. Uh, Coach Holman does a lot of subbing here on his days off. Uh, so he knows, gets to know a lot of the kids. Um, but, you know, as an educator, uh, I'm in these hallways every day and uh, it affects me when I have to cut kids. Uh, because I was one of those kids. As a freshman and a sophomore in high school, I didn't make the baseball team. It was really the only sport I did. I did go out for basketball as a freshman, but you saw the senior back, back of the basketball game today, you know, you'd understand. Uh, but anyhow, uh, and I was, I, was, I was a decent baseball player. I wasn't great, um, but I eventually made a baseball team by my junior. And uh, didn't have a scholarship uh, out of high school. I, barely, I, I played a little bit of varsity my senior year, uh, but baseball was my love. And guys, that's why I'm here. I mean, I love the game of baseball. These men love the game of baseball. And as parents, I, I imagine you guys enjoy this game a lot as well. Um, so making these decisions are, are not easy on me. And I remember the kids that I have to cut. And, and I know that some of them are going to wind up in my classroom someday. So it's, it's not something that I take lightly. Uh, and I try and make the best decisions I can because I have to sleep at night. And I, I know these boys have dreams. They, they have goals. They, they have things they want to do. And, and that's, I don't want to crush them. I never want to crush a kid's dream. Uh, so as I told the boys today, I said, you know, if, if you don't make the team and you love baseball, don't give up. Play in the summer and get better. Um, but we're at a point this year, guys, and, you know, where we are starting to build back up as a, as a program where we have a lot of depth. Like, more than I've seen in a few years. And th this is tough. And I, I want to address this. I've been thinking a lot about this, and I need to talk to the parents about this. Okay, and I'm, I'm recording this for a lot of the basketball people that aren't here. I need to talk about this. We have nine or ten junior or senior outfielders that are all pretty good baseball players. What do I do with that? Junior and senior outfielders. So I make a lineup. I got three outfielders. I have a DH, but there's no guarantee that one of those outfielders is going to be the DH. That means I got six or seven junior or senior outfielders that are not starting. Some that, if they want to get reps, are going to be on JV. And his parents. How are you going to feel about it? That's, that's hard. Um, but that's, that's the program we're at right now. That's where we're at. Now, every day, those kids are going to get to be able to go out and compete and show the coaching staff. I'm the one that makes the lineup. But I get input from my coaches. But I'm the one that makes the lineup. So I'm going to make that lineup. Now, what that lineup is, the first game of the year may not be the lineup of the last game. And it wasn't last year. Okay. It was similar. I actually looked at it today. I like, okay, I had all my lineup cards from last year. I was cleaning out my briefcase for the night and so forth. And I looked at the first couple games of the year and I looked at the last couple games of the year and it was different. But those are those are tough decisions. I mean, they're it's a good problem as a coach. I mean, we've got some talent. Uh, but I just, I wanted to prep you guys a little bit. This is, these are some tough decisions and we've got a lot of good players. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, I need to get that out there. Okay. Um, let me, let me keep going through this a little bit. We'll talk more about it. Okay. So C team, I'll usually keep about 15 guys. Okay. Uh, this is a place for younger players. This is mostly freshmen, sometimes some sophomores, okay? Uh, they're going to develop their skills. Uh, these players are taught fundamentals every day. 
We work on the fundamentals every day. Uh, I'm out with the C team and JV outfielders hitting fly balls every day. Okay. Uh, the, the coaches are hitting ground balls to the infielders every day. And we're working on fundamentals. This is crucial to their development. Uh, they're all going to get an opportunity to play. Will they have the same amount of playing time? No. Baseball is not socialism. Baseball is capitalism. Okay. Soccer is socialism. <laughs> Sorry. You never know what kind of crowd you're talking to. Okay. Can I quote you on that? Uh, you can quote me. And our soccer coaches will turn that way. Uh, but no, I mean, everybody will get an opportunity to play. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's not going to be equal. Okay. Uh, but anyhow, C team players get the opportunity. Uh, if they're not successful at C team level, Obviously, uh, they may struggle at the next level, okay? Uh, but I, and I told the boys today, I said, C-team is not a death sentence, guys. Especially, like, in years like we have right now. Uh, I have had multiple C-team guys grow up to be all-city baseball players and even all-state baseball players. Um, so, you know, it's just, we're getting into, we're getting into some good years here, I think. Uh, not that we've had bad years in the past, but we're getting into some deep years, okay? Uh, so take advantage. I mean, practice is five, six days a week. Get to play 20 games. Get, to, get a lot of playing time on CT. Uh, I'm trying to set up good competition for the kids, okay? Uh, let's get better. And, uh, you know, just stick with it. Everybody grows differently. Everybody starts at a different, you know, at a different spot when they're a freshman. Uh, I, am, I am witness to that. Okay, I was that kid. I was that scrawny little kid. Uh, when I was a freshman and sophomore, I didn't make it. I was still a scrawny kid when I was a senior, but I found a way. You know, it, it's just you just gotta you just gotta fight. You gotta fight, and uh, that's who I am. And so I, I respect that in the kids that come out and hustle and bust their butt and uh, show it on the field. You know, that's that you, you can't measure that. Okay, so let's go on to JB here. Uh, JB. Stepping stone to varsity. Uh, occasionally, JV players will bring up uh, to varsity, maybe mix them in, get them on the bench, let them experience some of that, because those are the next guys next year. Let's go. Okay. Uh, this helps players gain experience, allows them to get confidence. Uh, players at JV level uh, get an opportunity to play. Everybody will get to play. Uh, again, not the same amount. Um, we want to win games, but we also want to give the kids experience. Um, if they're not successful there, it's an indicator they'll struggle at the next level. Okay. Um, look in the city league, um, JV and C team. Just you know, you look at sports like softball and volleyball and tennis and golf. Uh, our league is not real strong. Um, we're working on that. Uh, met with the city league AD uh, last week and talked about, hey, you know, let's. Does, doesn't do any good for us to play Southeast twice a year. So we talked about maybe doing like, let's play 10 games against everybody in the city league plays each other and then seed it out. Top five play each other again. Bottom four play each other again. And then we get four or five more games outside of the city. Uh, that would be awesome. And it would really help us prepare for the postseason. Uh, <clears throat> The two years we've won a state championship here, we did not win the city league. Because the city league helped prepare us for state. Because the city league was good. Uh, so the better competition we can play, the tougher, you know, the tougher losses we have, the lessons we can learn, tough games, that sort of stuff. I mean, it's hard to get that playing southeast and south. You know, um, so we'll see what the future brings there. But, um, you know, JV guys, um, they got a shot to move up. And, uh, you know, they're, they're part of the future. Okay. Uh, varsity team philosophy. Um, look, I, I'm big on chemistry. I'm big on, like, building a, a well-oiled machine. And so with that, we're composed of players that will contribute to winning. Uh, each player is going to have a role. Uh, I told the boys today that role could change. 
Um, at any point, they want to ask me, Coach, what's my role? What do you think? And I told them, I have to be honest. If I'm not honest, I'm not going to be able to sleep with them. i got to tell you what I see, what I feel, okay? And sometimes you're not going to like that answer. But it's better than him hawing around the truth and, you know, leaving people out to drop. Okay? I've been doing this for a long time. And so, I, you know, when I'm trying to choose between two players, who's going to play and who's not, there's a lot that goes into that. How do they run? How do they play defense? What are they going to give us offensively? Uh, there, there's so much that goes into this. And when we talk about those nine or ten junior, senior outfielders, they're all different. Okay, They, they all bring something different to the table. And so we got to let that play out. Okay, So I will, I will communicate that. They can see a lot of that on their own. Okay, they, I mean, they know. Okay. Uh, Players on Bishop Carroll's baseball team will understand the hard work, uh, what hard work is and the rewards that come with it. Uh, practicing consistently and diligently, players will be given advanced instruction at their positions. Dedication to the game of baseball and their teammates is a requirement. I need everybody to buy in. They got to buy in. Okay, if we're going to win, we got to buy in. And uh, so that that's key. Uh, the student athlete wishes to. They, uh, we'd love to see them play college baseball if that's what they want to do. Um, we have several uh, kids that have already signed, our seniors that have signed for next year. We have a few that are still trying to, to get on somewhere. And as soon as we get out next week and get going a little bit, I'll be able to contact some coaches about some of the guys that haven't made it yet or gotten an offer yet. Sometimes those offers come in the spring. Sometimes they come in the summer of their senior year. Okay. Some come early. Okay. It, it's an interesting process of recruiting. Uh, if you have questions about that, feel free to email me about recruiting. Uh, I've tried to talk to the boys. They need to come see me, say, Coach, what can I do? The best thing they can do is be their own best advocate. They need to get out there. Um, they need to contact coaches. Uh, for the younger guys, uh, coaches cannot contact kids that are sophomores. Okay. Now, if they're really talented, the coaches will hear about them. The college coaches will begin to hear about them. Um, once they reach their junior year, they can contact coaches. Okay. Uh, Juco route had an event in town yesterday that I think several of our guys went to. Um, which, you know, JUCO route in Kansas is a good route. Uh, Jayhawk JUCO baseball is one of the best conferences in the country. And uh, so it's a great place to kind of get started. Now, if, you, if you're a really good academic kid, JUCO may not be your route. Okay. Um, we have great, we have a lot of great NAIA schools in, in Kansas. Uh, and, you know, D2s. We only have three Division One schools in this in this uh, state, and so those positions at D1 schools are hard to come by. Uh, and I'm I'm pushing two or three of our kids right now uh, that I think are borderline D1 guys, and um, so I'm in contact with Wichita State, K State, KU, um, and you know trying to highlight our guys there. Uh, have a pretty good relationship with a lot of the JUCO coaches. Um, and so, you know, I will, uh, there's this thing called field level. I don't know if you guys heard of field level for recruiting. Um, it's pretty good. Not every coach uses it, but it's free. Um, you can get on field level and fill out, uh, you know, put, you can put video on there, all your GPA information, all of that. Uh, and it's it's a pretty good tool uh, for recruiting. But the best thing is to do for kids to contact the coaches and say, Coach, here's my schedule. I'd love to play for you. Come watch me. Or, Coach, can I come work out for you? If you're a junior, can I come work out for you? Okay. Uh, they'll appreciate that. Okay. Uh, and then talk to me. Uh, you know, have the kids talk to me. Like, I... Look, some of our kids belong at Cali County, one of the best programs in the nation. Some of our kids have no business going to Cali County. Okay, they might need to go to a, a Highland 
or a Lebet or in the ocean. Okay? You understand, right? It, it's There's a different level. And so um, have, have your sons talk to people if they want to play college baseball. And I, and I will do best to try and help them understand where they're at and what's a good fit for them. Okay? And I've had that conversation with some of you in this room. Okay. Um, I don't need to go over this with you guys real quick uh, that much. I talk to the boys about this a lot, but I'll go real quick with you guys. I talk to the boys about acting professionally uh, in public. They're wearing Bishop Carroll clothing. They need to act like gentlemen. Okay. Uh, classroom, I'm big on that. I do not like getting you know emails from other teachers about baseball players. Okay, and I warn the boys about that. Uh, and then on the ball diamond. Okay, uh, this is big. Okay, so God and school and family take precedence in school. I truly do buy into that. Okay, so listen, sometimes the weather on Saturday is awful. Now, I'm mostly talking about varsity. Okay, Saturday stinks, but Sunday, it's 76 and Sunday. Uh, sorry, no wind on, on Sunday. Let's take Saturday off. Well, my mom's sister has a birthday, and I, my mom wants me to go to this thing. Go. Okay, I, I told the kids, I'm telling you now, go. You will not be punished for not being able to come to a Sunday. Okay, it's optional. Mandatory optional. Okay, if you can't come, you can't come. You will not be punished, I promise you. I'm telling them, so communicate with me. Mom wants me to do this. Okay, go do that. It's not a big deal, okay? Uh, this is for days when they're at school. If they're going to be gone, they're going to be late. Just, I told them, come by my room, let me know. Okay? Grades, grades, grades. Don't go on grade check. Grade check stinks. The 90 hours of, or 90 minutes of, uh, study hall and then you got to fill out the grade thing you got to get to jenny and it's a mess okay just don't even go some kids struggle some kids it comes easy work hard okay respect for teammates and staff and then if you're on time you late. so what does that mean well you're getting out of 315. i want you to be out there by 330 335 we're stretching okay saturday as I do this, you know, it goes for both, varsity, JVC. Saturday, practice at 11. You're showing up at 11, you're late. You're late because there's 15 guys in the dugout with their spikes on. They're already ready to go out and stretch, and you're running in to put your spikes on at 11, at 10.59. You're late, right? I mean, you want to be early. Okay, so that's something I'm trying to train these boys on. Right? <laughs> This is what we want to do at the end of the year. Okay, and I told the boys. It's been since 2012. It's been too long. It's time. So you varsity parents. It's time. It's time. Okay. We're ready to do that again. I love to brag on these boys. Uh, we have 13 kids in college baseball right now, one in professional. Uh, and these, I, I love these kids, all of them. Uh, and I want to brag on them, so I'm going to do that. Okay. You may not know some of these kids, but I want to introduce you. Okay. I'll start top left, Blake Freeman. Uh, Freeman, uh, I actually, he played on my son's team growing up uh, at 14. And, uh, he really wanted to go to Butler Community College. That was his thing. He wanted to go to Butler. They didn't want him. So he ended up at a D2 in Oklahoma. And as a freshman, broke the record for hits by a freshman in a season. Uh, maybe broke the record for hits in a season with 60 hits. Okay. Last year as a junior, he was uh, all region. Not just all league, but all region. Okay. He's back for his fifth year senior. 
and uh, he's off to a good start. He's a great kid. Uh, Kale Blazy, uh, Kale played here and then went on to Barton for two years, two or three. Two. He did three, yeah. And uh, he's at William Jewell, and uh, we're looking for uh, Kale to break into, break into that lineup and help that team. Uh, it's a, it's a good school. William Jewell's a really good college, high academics. So, so Kale will be challenged both uh, athletically and academically. <coughs> Senior uh, went to Cali and then uh, transferred up to Washburn. Uh, he's he's another one trying to break into the lineup. Uh, Brent told me he had a good at bat. Yes, was that today or yes yesterday? Uh, so uh, Seager moved to the outfield from the infield, and uh, you know we have high hopes for, for Seager. Uh, Drake is off to a great start at Coffeeville. It's his second year there. Uh, broke his jaw midseason last year, and he's a starting catcher and is tearing it up, and we're stoked for him. Uh, Dad just told me he got an offer uh, uh, this week, so uh, we got super high hopes for Drake. Uh, and I, I love getting on the computer and checking on their stats. Carson, uh, Carson played at Barton as well uh, and went out to Jordan Mason last year, started shortstop, and uh, – they opened their season last weekend. He went one for ten, and uh, I'm not a big Snapchat guy, but I'm on it. And uh, he sent out a snap today, uh, asking for a GoFundMe for some hits. <laughs> so I sent him some good vibes. So at least he's got a, he's got a good attitude about it, and uh, he'll bounce. But he'll be fine. Uh, he's a special kid. Uh, Paul Schoenfeld played just a couple of years ago. He played one year at Butler, and then went on to Colorado Mesa. He's hit leadoff for them. He's off to a really good start. Uh, great, savvy kid. Uh, Brady, he was a COVID senior, which was awful. Um, so he didn't really get to do a lot at Bishop Carroll. Uh, but he's the ace at Neosha this year. He's, he's throwing 90-plus uh, now. Uh, he's a 6'4 kid. Yeah, I'm so excited for him. Uh, so he threw the other day. And then uh, James, who was our ace last year, uh, he's over there. He got an inning this weekend, and then skip over to the green area. Jordy was their number two. He threw the second game, uh, and he got a W. Uh, so good for Jordy. He's a good lefty. He was awesome for us. Uh, Oscar Gallardo at Pratt. He's back for a second year there. Andreas just loves baseball. He's hanging on at friends. Uh, Ryan, uh, Brady's little brother, he went over to the Osho, had some surgery, so he'll probably redshirt. And then Thomas Munn played for us last year. He's at Newman, and he's going to have to he's going to have to earn it over there. He's got some guys in front of him, but uh, I'm confident he will. He did it here. He was a C team guy here. Shoot, kid was uh, big for us last year. He he came up big for us. So uh, I got confidence. So if he wants it, he'll get it. Uh, Scott Engler. A lot of you guys might not know this young man. Uh, he's a 2015 graduate. He's our only guy in pro baseball. Uh, he was a troubled youth. Here at Bishop Carroll, uh, teachers hated him as a freshman and a sophomore. Uh, by his senior year, they all loved him. Um, he's just a fantastic guy. And the Rangers have stuck to him. He's recovering from his third Tommy John surgery. Uh, and I talked to him last week, and he's going uh, to be ready for the second half of the season this year. Um, the Rangers stick it with him. He's 95, 96 miles an hour last year in double A. Uh, he's, he's this close. So uh, I hope I hope Scotty makes it. Uh, that'd be great for all of us, I think. So, hey, if you boys want to do this, you know, there's there's a lot of paths to it. Uh, it involves a lot of hard work. Uh, but if that's their dream is to play college baseball, we're going to try and help them get there. Okay, so let's talk about tryouts. Uh, this afternoon, your boys all filled out uh, five of these sheets, okay? Um, each one of these coaches uh, are going to have these sheets, okay? And uh, they're going to rate your players or grade your players on these different abilities, okay? Um, so I kind of went through this with the players. Guys, it's tough to play baseball if you don't throw well, okay? It's almost a necessity. Uh, but if you do a lot of other things really well, you may have a chance if you don't throw well. Okay, uh, but that's going to be key. Okay, uh, fielding. Uh, we talked about infield play versus outfield play. I pointed out a couple of the boys that 
when they were freshmen, went out for infield, and I said, you're an outfielder, okay? Uh, and they, they realized that. Uh, and then, uh, so I told, I encouraged them, I don't let them try for, out for both infield and outfield. I said, if you think you, you're confident as an infielder, try out for infield. I can always move you to the outfield. It's tough to move a kid from the outfield to the outfield. It's, it's just hard to play, okay? And I, I think I think I brought up Parker today. I said, Parker, can I move you into second base? And he said, no. He's got hands and stuff. Okay, I, I can't put him in the end. Okay, but uh, but I can you know I can move a Tate Blazy that has good hands and runs well. I can move him to the outfield if I need to. And I said, you know, you might end up being a college outfield. Who knows? Uh, he can do that. It's hard to go from one to the other. So I encourage them if they thought they were. A good infielder to try out for infield, no problem moving you to the outfield. Uh, hitting, uh, you know, guys, it, that's a stressful thing. You know, hit, when we get to tryouts and you're on an island, you know, when we throw batting, you know, batting practice and tryouts, we just, you know, nice and easy right in there. I mean, it's firm, but I mean, we're not throwing gas at them, okay? <laughs> we want them to be successful in tryouts. We're not trying to make kids look bad. Okay, so we're, we're going to throw it in there. And I told him, I said, look, we're looking for the athleticism of the swing, not so much the results. The results are nice. But, I mean, I have a kid that was on varsity last year when I think he was a sophomore. Four tryout hitting. I think he fouled one off. I mean, that was it. I mean, he was all in his head. But everything was pretty good. I mean, it was working. And we can tell. This okay? guy uh, so I said, hey, look, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the swing. We're looking for the athleticism of the swing. Okay, it's a tryout. So that's what we're watching. Uh, we, one, of the, one of the three days of tryouts, we will run a 60-yard dash. Okay, and this, this is big in baseball. Okay, speed kills. Okay, and it's going to kill some of our opponents this year. We are going to run all over people. We did last year. We're going to run. We're going to run, and we're going to run. Okay, so if you can run, that's good. Okay, if you can't run, that's not good. <laughs> but if you can hit it, that's good, too. So we have to balance that. Um, maybe you don't run or field well or hit well. Well, maybe you're a pitcher. Okay. Mr. Weakland's in here, and when his son was a freshman, and I, I, just, I want to tell people, look, I mean, he was close. I mean, I, I didn't know whether to keep Jack or not. But we're like, well, if we're keeping him, he's a PO. He's a pitcher only. Okay. And that kid, as a freshman, he threw on the C team. A sophomore, he was a JV ace. Last year, he was 5-0 and up on varsity. Okay, that's success to me. He's, what, five foot nothing? Okay, a little bit chubby, but he can pitch. He can pitch. And I can see it. I can see, there's something in there. You're going to keep this kid. Okay, that, you know, that's what we're doing here. Okay, so there may be... One or two kids will say, look, you're a pitcher. You don't run well. You don't really swing it that well. You're a pitcher. Okay, so embrace it. And that's what Jack did. Jack embraced it. And my son had to do that, too. I, you know, after my son's sophomore year, I'm like, your son was an outfielder. And, and your son was an outfielder. And I'm like, Jack. My Jack, you're not as good as those guys, and you're not going to be as good as those guys. You need to pitch. That's what I told my son. I took the bat away from him, okay? And he was fine. And he was fine, okay? And he pitched in college and had success, okay? Uh, so if we do that, I mean, as a parent, you're like, freaking E, right? I'm sorry. Look, I have a lot of experience at this. I'm going to look at your kid, his athleticism, and I'm going to say, look, this is. This is the path they need to go. Outfield, infield, pitcher, catcher, 
that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so the speed is important. Uh, savvy, potential. I don't know if you're familiar with this term savvy. Uh, some kids you see on a baseball field. They just have that feel. You, you can watch them. That kid looks like a ball player. He's got savvy. Okay. He moves like a ball player. Uh, potential. He's got speed. He's got quick trigger. Like quick trigger muscle. So kids have slow moving muscle. Everything's long. So kids are just like quick. All right, that kid's got some potential. Like we can work with that. Yeah, his swing is off, but we can fix that. We can fix that. We can work with that. Okay. So that this is more for sophomores, freshmen. But we're looking at. All right, when you keep this kid. He's got. He's got this. He's got some of that. Okay. So each coach is going to rate your kids on these things. And uh, Wednesday night. So what we like to do is on Monday and Wednesday, we will do pitching and catching and fielding and throwing. Tuesday is always hitting on triangles. So we give a day off on the arms. Okay, because kids come out, we want them to show us what they got. So uh, depending, depending on the weather, field conditions and so forth, Monday will be either fielding and throwing or pitching and catching. Tuesday will be hit. Okay. We'll talk about the weather in a minute. Uh, field condition. So, uh, Wednesday night, after we get through all this, we'll look at their speed. We'll have radar gun on their arms, uh, pitchers, uh, on catchers, position players across the diamond, position players from the outfield, get a radar gun reading on that. We'll make comments, notes uh, on each player. We'll sit down as a coaching staff on Wednesday night and start paring it down, okay, um, to get to that 48-50 number. And as we go through that, um, like I said, I got I got a fairly large senior class, talented junior class as well. Good sophomore class. I haven't seen the freshmen play. Hear good things about them. It's great. Uh, as I told the boys, if, if, if the freshman is good as a sophomore, keeping the freshman. The sophomores as good as a junior, keeping the sophomore. This is what you do for your program. It's not personal. You have to build a program. You've got to keep the most talented kids in the program. It's like I said, doesn't matter what your last name is or where you go to school. I don't pay attention to anything. I don't care. It's what we see on the diamond. And that so that's what we will base those decisions on. This, this alone. Okay. Um, okay. Let's talk about the weather. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I told the kids today, <coughs> over prepared. <clears throat> you know, freshmen. You got a locker in the PE room, locker in the hallway, throw some extra sweatshirt, a couple sweatshirts in there. Over prepared. Bring warm clothes every day. Because you know Kansas you can turn on you in a minute. Uh, Got the 80 degree rule with Coach Santikorski. Uh, and so sleeves, sweatshirts, okay, uh, pants to baseball practice, baseball pants. Okay. Um, especially for freshman parents that don't, uh, kids that don't drive, uh, I will try and notify on Twitter as early as possible what the plans are for tryouts. Uh, the forecast right now. Calls for rain on Sunday. Um, Monday looks pretty good, uh, but if the field is wet because of the rain, uh, we will do pitchers and catchers indoor. Okay, if we do pitchers and catchers indoor, we'll most likely go to sluggers at uh, Ridge and 13th. They're uh, front building. They have 
two mounds upstairs, which works really good for a tryout scenario. We can get all the coaches up there, radar gun up there, and get the kids loose down low and get them upstairs, throw their 15 to 20 pitches. Okay. Uh, so that will likely be Monday if it's wet. Now, let, this is going to change at you know, by Monday. <laughs> we'll see, hopefully for the better. Uh, hopefully it's 60 and sunny and you know, we don't get a lot of rain. Uh, if it's nice outside on Monday, we'll do fielding drill. I'd like to get that one done first. We can tell the most about your boys from that. Okay, you get them outside, start hitting fly balls, ground balls. We'll see a lot. Okay, uh, so but we'll do that. Uh, hitting will be on Tuesday, and then we'll do the other on um, on Wednesday. Okay, so typically, uh, if your if your kid makes the team, JV and C team practices run about three thirty to five thirty. Okay, uh, varsity uh, three thirty to when we're done. Uh, so what we do here, guys, we only have one field. Okay, so what we do every day and a typical day at Bishop Carroll baseball practice. Uh, the JV and C guys, the younger guys, are going to get down in the field. They're going to get the spikes on. Uh, they might stretch their legs a little bit, and they're going out onto the field. Okay? We've got all these coaches here. They're all going to be hitting fungos. They're not going to throw. They're going to be taking ground balls and fly balls. Okay? I'll be hitting fly balls to the youngsters. These guys will be hitting ground balls. Coach Sam Gorski uh, will go around. He's our infield guy. He's going to go around and talk to the young guys about what they're doing at their positions. Okay? That's a typical day. Okay? They're going to do that for 30, 45 minutes. Varsity guys are going to take their time, and they're going to go out and stretch, do a good stretch and a good throw. We have a throwing program that we use. They throw every day this way. Okay? Uh, so by the time the varsity is done with their stretch and throw, Okay, and then anything we got to talk about, JV and C team are getting reps, 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 reps. Okay, I hit more fly balls to JV and C team outfielders last year than I did the varsity outfielders. Okay, so I'm out there banging away. Uh, once that's done, uh, JV and C team, whatever Coach uh, Beatty and Coach Trujillo have for them, they'll go out to Wilbur. There's loaded yesterday. Okay. Uh, and they'll go out there and they'll stretch and throw. They'll do their throwing program, work on their arms, get their work, arm work. Okay. And then it's any infield work, any team defense stuff. And then JV and C team will go to the cages, the bullpens, and get their work in. Okay. There. Uh, varsity rolls in, you know, gets their stretch throwing done, and we go, go about our practice. Okay. So the JV and C team are getting reps every day on the varsity. Uh, that's something I adopted a few years ago, and it seems to work with one one good field. I mean, the Wilbur field is it's okay. It's all grass. And there's some ruts out there. Purgatory, coach. Purgatory. <laughs> yeah. So uh, spring break, as we play on March 21st against West Hots. So varsity parents might remember. We lost one game in the City League last year. It was the West High. What do I want to do on spring break? I want to practice. I want to enter squad. I want to get fed. What do you want to do on spring break? You want to go skiing? You want to go to the lake? I know. You're baseball parents. You never get to go to the lake. Because you're always at a baseball game. Guys, I never had a spring break. The time I was in high school, I had like two spring breaks when I wasn't involved in baseball. And then I started coaching. I never had a spring break since. So that's what summer is for. <laughs> All right. JV and C team, we will give a few days off. I mean, if you're on varsity, I. I'd love it for you to be there. Um, I can give a couple days, you know, off. Uh, 
but if you're competing for a position, I, it's just, it's hard, okay? Um, love you to be there, okay? Uh, so usually what we'll do with JV and C and varsity a little bit is on the front end of spring break, we've got the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, for JV and C, for, for sure, that Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, we'll be off, probably start back up Wednesday, something like that, okay? Uh, Coach Dan Gorski and I, uh, we're going to be at the field. So we'd love to have all the boys there with us. Um, so you guys think about that, okay? Um, I will try and let you know on, as far as going off campus. Um, let's say it's the middle of the season. <clears throat> it's raining all day, okay? What are we going to do? Um, well, a lot of times we have to share facilities with softball. Um, you guys have been in Eagles Landing. There's a couple of cages. Um, so what I usually try and do with Coach Harshberger is for Jamie and C, I try and get those guys in right after school, about 45 minutes into the cages. Uh, get a lot of swings in, uh, and then we'll let softball come in. Uh, varsity time, a lot of times we'll go off campus um, using 316 facilities, sluggers, 316 facilities. Um, I have a pretty good relationship with those folks over there. Um, they use our field in the summer some, and so they're pretty good about getting us in um, over there. for. Uh, so that, their Harry facility is really nice. Uh, the, the facility at uh, uh, 13th and Ridge is shrunk. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll do what we need to do um, as far as going off campus. Um, JV and C, if, if Ray wants to take uh, the JV or the JV and C down to Harry Street, we'll try and let you know and give you a heads up on that as far as rides getting down to Harry Street. Um, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, you can get a lot of work done in there. In fact, last year, I think one of the turning points in our season was uh, a rainy day when we got inside. And, uh, we got to do a lot of individual work with the kids. We struggled early last year, and kids were willing to listen. Uh, a lot of times, you got to let these kids fail before they'll listen to you. Uh, I hate that, but you got to let them fail. And, uh, our, I was so proud of our team last year. And we, you know, we started really rough. Um, I wasn't suicidal, but I was the best hitter on the team at 53. And uh, yeah, it was tough, you know. And you know, that I think that practice indoors like really helped us and start to see a change in some guys. And uh, you know, you never know what it's going to be, but you know, I, I I hope you trust this coaching staff. They do have the best interest. They're good Christian men. And, um, you know, we're also baseball guys. You know, I mean, I live this. This is, this is, I mean, I love teaching history and government. I really do. I mean, if your son or daughter's ever had me, they'll tell you. But um, this, is, this, is, this is what I get up in the morning for. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, have your boys and, Work with them. Uh, unfortunately, some of them, you know, not everybody will make the team. I think I told you guys, you know, my freshman sophomore year, I didn't make it. And I was not a guy that got scholarships out of high school. I had to walk on and face a lot of challenges in the baseball life. And uh, it made me a better man. And I just, it's something I can't shake. I'll be doing it. Coach Angler, I don't, I don't want to put him on the spot how old he is, but this is his life, guys. This is what he does. He is a baby. Okay. Coach Holman, I mean, it's like, it's everything. His brothers, stepdad, I mean, it, 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 it's it's everything. Over just, you know, Ray, yeah, I mean, Ray coached his boys, both Division One baseball players. I mean, uh, Tony, like, who did the grind at, at Tabor, man, and he just wanted to play. Did I'll play whatever, Coach. I'll play third. I'll pitch. I'm a catcher. I'll pitch. What do, what do you want me to do? 
I'll do it. You know, I mean, we all love the game and we all want to win. And uh, that's, I mean, that's what I want to do. I want to win. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to win. And have fun doing it. We're going to work hard. We're going to work hard. And we're going we're gonna to win. Okay. So, uh, listen, if, if you guys uh, have any issues, You can reach out to me. I, I would ask that you ask your sons to reach out to me and talk to me, and you can communicate with your sons. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be honest. And you may not agree with that. They may not agree with that. Uh, but I can only do what I do, and that and that is try and make the best decisions for our program. So uh, if you feel the need to reach out to me for you know personnel decisions and player decisions, you can. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, too. Um, I will try and be gracious. I will be gracious. And, um, and understand that you're, you, you are your son's best advocate. And I get that. Um, and I'll listen. Um, but the, tr the truth is, sometimes, guys, it comes down to athleticism, comes down to what is produced on the field. That's you know that's what it comes down to. Those those are decisions we make, and uh, but it's all in the best interest of Bishop Carroll Catholic High School baseball. Um, last thing, uh, you might be glad to know the state has required that we do all of our scorekeeping on game changer so at all levels. Uh, so varsity, we've been doing this for years, uh, but JV and C team will be required. I've got some really green freshman managers that we have to train. Okay, they don't know much. They didn't, yeah, they don't know much, but they want to do it. Uh, so we'll be training them uh, at inter squads and so forth on this uh, on stats. Okay, uh, for varsity especially. Um, Coach Santagorski keeps a, an offensive chart. Um, he keeps a chart on all kinds of stuff, which is so valuable uh, that we discuss the day after the game. But um, so sometimes the, the girls don't always get it right on the game change. And so we have to make some adjustments. Uh, I put those, those stats on max preps. Max preps is a little bit finicky. Um, so if you're looking for Bishop Carroll, Catholic high school baseball, a max prep sometimes is best to just put in our zip code. Uh, and then I will update the stats in there. So don't go by the stats on Game Changer because uh, sometimes girls struggle between a hit and an error. Okay. Um, and so sometimes we struggle with it. I mean, you, can, you know, those are scorekeeping decisions that have to be made. But uh, so I will update those um, as soon as possible. Everything else that I have going on, um, but yeah. So if you have family out of town, this would be nice. They can keep track of games um, on their phones uh, on Game Changer. Trying to think. Think anything else? Uh, yeah. Let's talk about shoes and bats. Uh, shoes. Okay. Uh, we will play on turf this year, all levels, JV, C team, and varsity. Uh, we will play on grass and dirt. Uh, the best shoe to have on grass and dirt is spikes, metal spikes. Uh, best and only thing to have on turf these days, I guess, is molded cleats, which I guess would be plastic or rubber or something like that. Molded. Uh, some of your kids that play football have molded cleats. Okay. Uh, they can wear those gold or whatever color they are, molded cleats when we play on turf if they want. Um, I hate telling parents, hey, you need to buy two kinds of shoes. But you might want two kinds of shoes. I, you know, uh, I don't like molded cleats on turf and, and grass. I mean, spikes just, if you play, they just, they rip. So much better. 
Um, so, I mean, Varsity will play at Wichita State. JV will play at Wichita State. JV and C team will play at Mays, May South on their turf. Um, you don't need it for a lot of games. Uh, Riverfront has dirt in that. Play that for sure. You guys excited? I'm, yeah, I'm not excited. Uh, that's going to be neat, guys. Uh, so, and hopefully we can continue to do that. You know, uh, I would love for Riverfront to host 5A State. Uh, hopefully we get Capen to host it. They've been hosting 5A State over at Ag for years. I shouldn't say this because I'm being recorded. I appreciate them hosting State. <laughs> they do a good job. They do a good job. They do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so we plan on being there. Uh, and let's see, bats, bats. Uh, I'm not sure what 14 year olds are using. Drop fives. You go to you go to drop threes now. So um, 33 inch, 30 ounces, 32 inch, 29 ounces. Um, I have budget for some bats. That budget goes to varsity bats. Uh, so if your son uh, has a bat, that's great. Uh, BYOB uh, for JV and C. Okay. Uh, we will provide helmets. Uh, we will provide jerseys. Uh, as far as pants go, I have pants. All three teams wear just white pants. Uh, no stripe or anything like that. I have pants every year when I hand out uniforms. If you want some white pants, the kids are like, no, I got white pants. So I usually end up handing out like two or three pairs of white pants a year. These guys have pants they like. I don't care if it says Under Armour or Nike or Russell or they're white. Okay. Uh, did get new jerseys this year for the first time ever in 25 years being here. We have a home and away. Uh, green and white, which is nice. Um, it stinks when you're wearing whites and you go on the road and they're like, don't you have a way uniform? Uh, so that, that's a first. Uh, so uh, we should have enough of those for uh, varsity and most of the JV uh, home and aways. Um, and let's see. So that's injuries common. Yeah, your son son comes home, his arm's killing him, okay, he's throbbing, throbbing, tell him to talk to coach the next day, let's get some ice on that, let's take a couple days off, okay, uh, tryouts can be a traumatic experience for people, uh, I try and encourage kids, you know, go out, do fun, have fun, do your best, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to watch it, okay, see what you can do. Um, hey, you know, your kid's doing great. You know, he's going to rise. Okay, you know, just, you know, I, I, I wish him all the best. I, I wish you guys all the best um, with this, this journey. Um, a lot, most of you guys will be here on the ride for four years. With us. So, uh, let's enjoy it. Um, Umpires, this is a big thing. I'm sorry, I love, I'm driving on. Uh, I have had to come to the realization, and we're struggling finding umpires. Like, there are not a lot of umpires. And what has driven umpires away, uh, partially, is coaches and parents. You guys know that. You, you've heard about it. Um, so, uh, I, I'm going to tell the kids, look. Expect the umpires to be back. They're going to be back. So you can't control that. So deal with it. Move on to the next pitch. Um, I ask parents, try and do this. It's hard. Especially when your kid's on the mound. You know what I mean? And you're like, you want to yell. You can yell. Just don't yell too much. Okay? 
Uh, understand that, you know, if, if we don't have umpires, we can't play. And so I, I really, I bump Coach Sanagorski down. I'm like, oh, your voice carries. Stop. Because if he gets in trouble, I get I get benched. <laughs> Holman can't even say he's coached first bear. Can't, I can't him argue. up on the way over. Huh? I try to sugar him up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you. Yeah. Like pat him on the butt. Hey, good job, <laughs> you know, let's encourage him. And you know, when it's over, it's over, and you you gotta let it go. But then if we get tossed, it's anger management. So yeah, we yeah. Like players and coaches, we got anger management. Stay away from it. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Just like when you need it. So you got to <laughs> sit a game. Twenty five years, I've been tossed twice, and and you know, I I felt like it was necessary. Okay, uh, but it's been a long time. So because I I had to sit against like I got tossed against Heights. And I had to sit against the first game against Cable. That was awful. You know, I was in the outfield and we were playing at Newman. I'm looking at the in the outfield. Yeah. So, anyhow, I'm dragging on. I'm going to let you guys get on. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Uh, ebrightcharlesbcch.org. Um, but again, have your sons talk to me. I will communicate as much as I can through Twitter, let you know what's going on uh, about Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And, uh, we will post cuts uh, uh, Thursday morning. What I will post is the team. So some years, and this may be one of those years, it's tough. Like, you know, it's Wednesday night, and we're going through this, right? And it's 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. And I'm like, all right, we're going to have to do two cuts. So I will post, like, first cut. Okay. Or I will just post, these are the teams. Okay, and that means it's over. Okay, and I'll tell the boys all this. But, um, and I'll post those outside my classroom. I'll post those down by the PE locker room. Uh, just like these are, the, I'm not going to post who got cut. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to put it on Twitter. I don't, you know, I just, have your boy text. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, what will end up happening is there's going to be some bubble guys. There's going to be some guys that are kind of stuck in purgatory between Varsity and JV. Okay? There's going to be some guys that are in between JV and CT. We just need to see a little bit more. We get make sure we're going to make the right calls here. Okay? Uh, JV and CT act as a unit in general. They practice together. Uh, we bring up JV guys to help with inner squads. Uh, so guys guys get shuffled around. They get moved around. Um, so, again, uh, C team is not a death sentence at all. Uh, it's a blessing to, to get to get to play and, and uh, get better every day. Uh, so you could see, you know, the kids take a picture of the thing and send it to you. If you see some bubble areas. Uh, guys that we don't know. We got some guys that are injured coming in that we're gonna have to give some time to heal up. Uh, maybe a week, two weeks. Uh, I got one kid that you know he's gonna have surgery maybe during spring break. I had a kid last year that had broken leg. I'm like, what can what can we do to help you get ready for summer baseball? You know what? We, we want to help kids. Uh, we're not here to hurt kids. Uh, so. Uh, that's what you'll see uh, Thursday morning is uh, at least a first cut uh, and have an idea where your where your son is going to end up. Uh, that'll be Thursday, and then we get to practice on Thursday. We're teaching. It's all about we're teaching. Uh, outfield play, infield play, where to be, where to where to position yourself. Uh, how to you know PFPs, pitchers fielding their position. Uh, we're, we're teaching. Uh, we're going to teach for a couple days with everybody. Base run, basics of base running. How to get a good lead off. Uh, how to get a good jump. All these things. We're going to teach. Okay. Uh, we'll bring everybody together. Uh, and then we got an inter squad because I got I got to figure out 
which of those nine, ten outfielders are going to play. We got air squad. Let's go. You know, get pitchers on the mound. Who's who's ready? Who's throwing strikes? Who's got good stuff? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing on Saturday. So we got tryouts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. We're in our squad. Monday we'll probably finish up in our squad because we got so many dang arms. Let's get them out there. Let them throw. We'll see what they got. Okay. Uh, see how they handle this pressure. Okay. You got the freshman. Oh, that kid's got a nice arm. Let's bring that freshman up. Let him throw. See what he can do. Okay. And then we just roll from there. Okay. And make personnel decisions from that. Giving you a lot of information. I'm sorry. I'm going on. But I want you to feel comfortable, like, what what the what to expect. Okay. Uh, but we're going to work every day. Uh, we're going to get better every day. Okay. Uh, so, again, if you, if you have questions, reach out. I'm rambling. You guys got good? I cover everything? Okay. Uh, appreciate everybody coming tonight. Uh, looks like concussions, physical forms are all in, and uh, we're ready to go. So I look forward to seeing the boys out there. Bring a hat, baseball pants. They got a Carol shirt. Bring a Carol shirt. Go to work. Good? All right, thank you all. Appreciate it.